Okay, welcome, welcome everybody. Welcome and happy Sabbath. Today is the 28th day of October and it's a Sabbath and I want to say welcome, welcome to everybody. Um, the lesson today is from Jerusalem, from Jerusalem to Africa with the subtitle, The Southern Kingdom, the House of Judah. The Southern Kingdom, the House of Judah. And what we're here to demonstrate through the scriptures and through history is that the people that were taken out of West Africa as slaves are the children of Israel. And why are we doing this? It's because somebody asked me since my last um, two lessons ago, they say, okay, well, you have made a good argument that the Israelites came out of West Africa. You made a good argument. And um, you said it fulfilled the scriptures and the prophecies. Great argument. Their question, though, was, if Israel, as you can see on the map, if Israel here is in the land of Palestine, which is the land that the Lord gave the Israelites, the land of Canaan, if Israel is here, how are you saying that the Israelites came out of West Africa? How are you saying you are Israelite out of Africa? when Israel is supposed to be here in the land of Palestine, in, in the land of Canaan? And, and that's a great question, you know, and I believe that that is like a big gap in the, in the minds and in the, um, that we have to close in order to give full understanding to those who understand who are inclined to believe this message, but they still have that question. How are you saying we're coming out of Africa? And by the way, us coming out of Africa is a big reason why a lot of our people believe we are Hamites. They believe we are African Hamites. And it is easier to convince people that we are African Hamites than to convince them that we are Israelites coming out of Africa. They cannot see the connection. And that's the purpose of this lesson today is to build that connection all right and we have to do this before we go on because we're going to use some images and some um and some material that's not ours and we want to give um credence uh credit to the people to whom they um they deserve so under section 107 of the copyright act 1976 allowance is made for fair use for the purpose such as criticism comment news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is the use permitted by copyright statutes that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational, or personal, personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. All rights and credits go directly to its rightful owners. No copyright infringement intended. Thank you very much. And with that, we're going to go right into our lesson today from... Jerusalem to Africa. And we're going to start with the scriptures. We always we always start with the scriptures. So last night we talked about how that the northern kingdom of Israel was taken into captivity by the Assyrian king, Salmanazar. He was the one that, com that completed the last conquest, right? Um, and so the northern kingdom of Israel were already gone into, into exile, but the southern kingdom of Judah remained in the land of Canaan. And the question is, how did they get to Africa? Well, we're going, we're going to start with the book of Daniel. Why? Because the same thing that happened to the northern kingdom happened also to the southern kingdom. So in Daniel chapter 1 and verse, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. It says that in the third year of the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem and besieged it. And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judea, into, the, into his hands with part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried away, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God. And he brought the vessels in, uh, into the treasury of the house of his God. Who did that? Nebuchadnezzar. 
he came, he beseeched uh, Ju Judah and Jerusalem, and he took Jerusalem, and he went into the sanctuary, and he took the holy vessels of the sanctuary, and he took them into the temples of his God. Now, Jeremiah had prophesied that Israel, that, that um, Judah, the southern kingdom, would go into captivity for 70 years into Babylon. Why? Because Judah was doing the very thing that the northern kingdom of Israel was doing, which caused them to go into captivity into Assyria in the first place. And what was Judah doing? Worshipping false gods. We were worshipping the gods of the Zidonians and of the Jebusites and of the heathens, those Canaanites, that were still left in the land because remember we never killed them all we left them we never followed the lord's um uh instructions to wipe them all out we left them in the land and the lord says i'm going to let them be a thorn in your side and a prick in your eyes right and that's exactly what happened so we now started to worship their gods our god was very displeased and he decided to drive us out of the land so he sent Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, to take the southern kingdom of Judah out of Judea and to march us into the land of Shinar. Okay? So Israel, southern kingdom of Judah, which is the Jews, and the Jews, remember, family, are the three tribes of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Those are the Jews. The northern kingdom of Israel are not Jews, but they're already gone. So now the Jews are the ones that are left and they were taken here by Nebuchadnezzar. And we stayed in the, under that captivity for 70 years. And we're going to jump to another scripture. We're going to go to Daniel again, the fifth chapter. And by the way, I am taking us through the history to Africa. That's what we're doing here. Okay, so after about 70 years of us being in Babylon, Belshazzar, who was the, um, the, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, who first took us into Babylon, he had a drunken feast one night, and he was drinking out of those golden vessels that were taken by his father and put into the house of their God. He was drinking and making merry with them. And that same night, that same night, there was a handwriting on the wall. Okay? There was a handwriting on the wall. And what happened? The Medes and the Persians came and took down Babylon and killed him, Belshazzar. We're going to read that. Okay, so this was the handwriting on the wall, right? That says, Mini, Mini, Tekel, Ophirin, which, which means the kingdom is divided. And verse um, uh, 29 says, Then command Belshazzar, and, and they closed Daniel in scarlet because Daniel told him what the handwriting meant. Okay, they, they closed him with scarlet. And they put a chain of gold upon his neck and they proclaimed concerning him that he should be the ruler of the kingdom. Daniel said, I don't want to be no ruler. Verse 30. In that night was Belshazzar, king of the Chaldeans, slain. And guess what happened? Mede Persia took over and Darius the Mede took the kingdom being about 62 years old. So after 70 years, <clears throat> in Babylon, we were now in Medo Persia hands. So we left from Babylon captivity into Medo Persia captivity. Okay? Who are, who are we that we're talking about? Us, the Jews. Now we're in Medo Persia. And we stayed in Medo Persia for a while until we're going to read Ezra. Ezra. Chapter um, one. This is this is the Lord at work in the lives of men of the children of Israel. And and by the way, in every captivity that we go into, including this one, it is because the Lord did it. And in the same way that He delivered us out of every captivity, this final one is going to be the most spectacular delivery, and He's going to deliver us out of it forever. We won't go back. Okay, so Ezra chapter 1, we're going to read chapters, uh, verses 1 to 4. And it says, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the word of the Lord by mouth of Jeremiah, sorry, that the word of the Lord by mouth of Jeremiah might be fulfilled. 
the Lord stir up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia. Remember, we're in mid of Persia captivity. And the Lord stir up the heart of the king of Persia that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and put it also in writing, saying, Thus says Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord God of heaven has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in, Ju in Judah. Whoso is there among you of all the people, his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God which is in, in Jerusalem. And whosoever remaineth in any place where he sojourneth, let the men of his place help him with silver and with gold and with goods and with beasts, beside the free will offering of the house of, of God that is in Jerusalem. So Cyrus, when he came on the scene, in order to fulfill the prophecy of Jeremiah, sent us back to Jerusalem. So he released us out of Medo Persia captivity. And I've always said that the Medo Persia captivity is the best captivity we have ever been in. Because the Medes and the Persians were very favorable towards us. And this is the reason why the scripture says that Persia is going to be a help to us. Right? And um, and also in the archives, in the archives of the Persians is this account and they also have depictions and relics of who we were when we were in their captivity and this very letter is in their archives and i kind of have a feeling that this is the reason why those ishish people want to a war with persia you know who persia is iran iran now that's where we were in captivity in iran on the other side of the earth so anyway, so we were sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple, which was destroyed when Nebuchadnezzar came and took us into captivity. And it was destroyed by the white people, the Edomites. It was not the, it was not the Babylonians that destroyed that first temple. It was the white people, the Edomites. They always wanted to destroy our temple. Why? Because remember, Edom is the mortal enemy of Israel. And it's no wonder they have us in captivity today. They are our enemies. But anyways, let's move, uh, let's move on. We're going to read, read verse 7. It says, Also Cyrus the king brought forth the vessels of the house of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar had took forth out of Jerusalem and had put them in the house of his God. So, Cyrus brought them back. Even though did Cyrus the Persian bring forth by the hand of his treasurer, and he numbered them unto the prince of Judah. And this is the number of them. And I have to read this real quick, family. This is the number of them. This is the, the vessels, the golden vessels. And the holy vessels. It says 30 chargers of gold. 30 chargers of gold. And this is solid gold. In fact, when you go back to... Um, King David when King David made these all right, you will see how precious and how uh, uh, expensive these things are right? anyway 30 chargers of gold 1000 chargers of silver and 29 knives 30 basins of gold uh, silver basins of a second sort 410 and other vessels a thousand and all the vessels of gold and silver were 500 sorry were 5,400 and family somebody else has these in their possession today and we want them back I'm just saying Okay? All right. So, 
who were sent back to Jerusalem to rebuild the sanctuary and to return from captivity. And then I want to show you, um, pay attention family, look at this, look at this. I want to show you that, so what we just read is Ezra. We just read right here, Ezra. And by the way, you know, Ezra, in the order of books in the Bible, Ezra should not be here. Because remember, Ezra and the Medo-Persia captivity came after Daniel. So the book of Ezra should be after Daniel. And I keep pointing this out to us because they are trying to trick you. They're trying to trick your mind that you don't know the timeline of these books. And they put Nehemiah also here and they put Esther here before Daniel. But remember, Nehemiah and Esther is after Daniel because Esther occurred under Medo-Persia. Esther is the queen that is the is the is the Jewish girl that became queen to Vash for instead of Vashti, the Medo Persia queen. She was queen to Ashurus, and this happened after Daniel. Just so you know, all right. So what we just read is in the time of Medo Persia. So the prophet Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk. Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi, all these are during the time of Medo-Persia. And when you skip your page, one page over from Malachi, you're in New Testament, you're in Rome. So please understand that 400 years of Bible is taken out of right here. It's not in your Bible. You jump from Medo-Persia in Malachi to Rome in Matthew. And you don't realize that 400 years are missing during the time of the Greeks. And this is why we keep saying to put the Apocrypha back in the Bible. All right. And we're going to move on. We're going to move on because that's not the subject today. So we, we just ended here, Medo-Persia. We went back into our um, Jerusalem. This is the Jews. And now we have to encounter Greece. Greece. And that's the reason we're going to go to the Apocrypha. And we're going to go into the book of the Maccabees, which was in the Bible that they took out. It was in your Bible and they took it out. So we are in. We're going to go to Maccabees. Get yourself one of these family. Maccabees. And we're going to go to verse chapter 1 and verse 1. This is Greece. And it happened... After Alexander, the son of Philip, the Macedonian, who came forth out of the land of Chittim, had smitten Darius, the king of the Persia and the Medes. You see that? So Alexander the Great is the one who took down the Medo Persia Empire. He is the one that killed Darius, the king of the Medes and the Persian. And he reigned in his stead, the first over Greece. So Alexander the Great, Alexander the Great is the one who took down Medo Persia. Now remember, we were sent back by Cyrus. Now Alexander the Great and the Greeks become world power. Remember, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece. This is Greece. And what did he do? He divided his kingdom into four. Then afterwards, um, out of one of them came a, a wicked king whose name was Antiochus. And it says, um, we're going to read verse Let's read verse 20 for, for time's sake. And after that, Alexander had smitten Egypt. Sorry, Antiochus had smitten Egypt. He returned again in the hundred and forty and third year and went up again to Israel, Jerusalem, with a great multitude. He came at us in Jerusalem with a great army. And what did he do? And by the way, Alexander is a white man. And Antiochus Epiphanes, who we are reading about, is another white man. And watch what he's going to do. And he entered proudly into the sanctuary. What sanctuary? The sanctuary that Cyrus just made us build. This white man went proudly into the sanctuary. And what did he do? He took away the golden altar and the candlesticks of light and all the vessels thereof. Now remember, I just read and counted out how many vessels we got back. All right? This white man completes them again. And he took the showbread 
and the pouring vessels and the vials and the center of gold and the veil and the crown and the golden ornaments that were before the temple, all of which he pulled off. And he took us into captivity. Verse 32, we're going to read it. Verse 32, he said, but the women and children, he took, in, uh, he took them captive, right? And he possessed the cattle. So this white man under the Greeks, this is what he did to the Israelites. And it's not everything. I just want to show us that we went from Babylon to Medo-Persia to Greek captivity. So now, when you go back to your Bible, um, when you go back to your Bible, we just read some, just one chapter of what happened during, during here, during this 400 years. Okay? So um, we had to fight against them. We had to regain the sanctuary. We have to cleanse the sanctuary, which is what Daniel 8, 14, the cleansing of the sanctuary. We did it after 2,300 days. Literal days. All right? That kills the Seventh-day Adventist LNG White doctrine. It's false. Okay, so now, um, after that, we went into Matthew, Matthew 1. And this is the genealogy of Yahweh Shai Mashiach, because at this point, Christ was born. And where are we? We are now under Rome. So the Jews went from Babylon to Medo-Persia to Greece, and now we are in Rome, and the Savior is born. How do we know that we are in Rome? Matthew 2 and verse 1. Now when Yahweh was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem. So who was the king at the time when Yahweh was born? The Edomite king of Herod. This guy is a white man. He's a Roman. And he is king over us. And Yahawashai was born in Roman captivity, in Edomite captivity. So Esau was ruling over the king of Jacob. And this guy here tried to kill Yahawashai when he was born. Because he said to the wise men, you know, tell me where he is that I might come and worship him. But the scripture says, no, he was going to try to kill him. Right? So that leads us to that leads us to um, Revelation. We're going to read Revelation chapter um, 12. And there appeared a wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet and upon her head a crown of 12 stars. Who is this? Israel. Okay. And she was about to give birth to a child. Who was that child? Yahweh Shai. And who was trying to kill him? The Romans, Herod, the red dragon, the devil, which is called Satan. It's not Satan in the sky. It's the Romans. It's the Edomites. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. And behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his head. This great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns is the Roman Empire. It's the fourth beast. And um, it was personified by Herod. Because what did he do? It says, and his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. Now, we talked about this before, that the third part of the, the stars of heaven are who? The Israelites. And he had a third of the Israelites. He had Judah, Benjamin, and Levite, the Jews in captivity. A, a quick point, because the two-thirds was already gone, as you yes. just discussed. Yes, right, the two thirds. So the were third gone. was left. Yes. Thank you very much, Sabaya. Thank you so much. Yes, two thirds were already gone seven hundred years earlier. Okay, and they came back over the Euphrates, and you know they are the hidden ones in sub-Sahara. So now we're dealing with the with the southern kingdom, the three tribes. This is why the scripture says that his tail do the third part. It's the three parts of the the stars of heaven, who are the Israelites. We talked about that before. That the Israelites are the twelve stars. Okay, so now he tried to kill the man-child and when he could not kill the man-child because the, the, the wise men made a fool of him and they left and went another way because the Lord told them to. It says, 
He says that, and, and, he, and he sought the man-child who was to rule the nation with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and unto his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness. So who is the woman? Israel, the Jews, the three tribes that were in Jerusalem. Herod, after they decided, after they found that they could not kill Yahushai, decided to do evil to Judah and Jerusalem. And Yahushai himself did prophesy that that would happen. But let's finish this verse because it says that the woman fled into the wilderness. Now, where did the woman flee to? Where did the Jews flee to? Because that's where we're headed. Where she was play, where she, where, sorry, where she has a place prepared of God that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and three score days. One thousand two hundred and sixty days. And a day in prophecy is a year. So there is 1,260 years that the Jews would have fled into the wilderness. So um, let's go to uh, Matthew. No, sorry, let's go to Luke. Because Yahweh Shai prophesied this, that it would happen. Luke 21. And Yahawashai said this. Luke, Luke 21, we're going to read from verse 20 down. He says, And when you see Jerusalem compassed with armies, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. Christ is saying to his disciples, When you see the Roman army in Sorrow in Jerusalem, know that the desolation is nigh. And you should run. Run. He says, then let them that is in Judea flee into the mountains. Now remember the scripture that said that just said that the woman, the third part, fled from the dragon. Now when did this occur? When did when did when was Jerusalem surrounded with army? AD 70. So Christ was predicting AD 70 because he knew it would happen. And he said, when you see Jerusalem thrown with her armies, flee into the mountains and let them which are in the midst of it depart out. If you are in the city of Jerusalem, leave and let not them that are in the countries enter there into. For these be the days of vengeance that all things which are written must be fulfilled. What are the all things which are written that must be fulfilled? The total scattering and removal of Israel from the land of Judea, from the land of Canaan entirely. Why? Because of our sins. And the Lord said that if you sin against me, I'm going to scatter all of you to the four corners of the earth. So he had already done that to the northern kingdom 700 years earlier. Right? And the Jews, the southern kingdom, it was their turn. So they were scattered. Verse uh, 24, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Who shall fall by the edge of the, edge of the sword? The Jews. Yahweh is saying this. And they shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down by the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Another translation says until the time of the end of the Gentile rule. When is the time of the end of the Gentile rule? The next verse tell you. And after that, they shall begin to see the signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and perplexed of nation. Why? Because Christ is coming back. So the Gentiles are going to rule until the end of time. In the meantime, though, what's happening to Israel? We have to flee into the mountains. He says, let him that is in Judea and in the city flee into the mountains. So the question is, where did the Jews go? Where did the Jews go? Now, so far, we have been reading a lot of scriptures and prophecies. And Yahweh Shai himself, we have also been reading biblical history of the Jews. 
Now we're going to read another um, historical source. Okay, we're going to read another historical source. And <clears throat> it's going to tell us what happened to the Jews after they fled out of Jerusalem because they never fall off the face of the earth. And by the way, when we talk about the destruction of Jerusalem, you know, we're not just talking about the destruction of a little city. Because when you look back at the kingdom of Judah, there were millions and millions and millions of people in the kingdom of Judah. So it was not just a little town called Jerusalem that they destroyed. They destroyed all of Jerusalem, all of Judea, and all the suburbs. And they killed, they slaughtered, they, they murdered, they crucified. One writer says that there were more crosses than trees in the valley. And they also did what Yahweh Shai said they would do right here because he said that they would be led away captive. What, ha what does that mean? Slaves. A lot of the people of Judea were sold as slaves to the nations. So the Chinese came and bought them. And the Japanese came and bought them. And all the Arab people of the desert came and bought us. Right? And those of us who could escape did what Christ said and we fled into the mountains. So where did we go? And we're going to read it. We're going to read it. And here I'm reading from um, the book. This is a historical um, writing, a scholastic work from Babylon to Timbuktu. Is the book I'm reading. And I had to, um, forgive me for this, I had to copy it to be able to project it on this, on this display. So it talks about, um, uh, to this statue, the people brought the sacrifices of pigs, of pig meat. Now to what statue? The Romans, when they came to Jerusalem, they entered into the sanctuary. The white people, they are doing the same thing again that Antiochus and them did under the Greeks. And Yahawashai had said to his disciples that when you see the abomination of desolation standing in the holy place, let him that read understand. What he was saying is that when you see them do the same thing that they did under the Greeks, because that's what they did during the time of the Greeks, Antiochus and them went into the sanctuary and they offered pig meats upon the altar and defiled it. And that's the reason why the sanctuary had to be cleansed back under the Greeks. That's Daniel 8. Now he says, if you see this happen again in Jerusalem, know that the time is near. So now this is what this historian is writing about. And he said that they brought sacrifices of pig meat, the animal which is an abomination to the Jews. Because of, because of, uh, because of this religious persecution, the legitimate high priest, who at the time was Ananias III, and many other Jews fled into African countries, such as Egypt and Ethiopia and Cyrenica, which is Libya. Let's continue. Throughout the last 1,200 years, the main factors that have contributed to the social migration of the Jews. 2,500 2, years. Huh? 2,500 years, not 12. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Steve. Um, 20, it says 2,500 years. The main factor that have contributed to the social migration of the Jews were wars, religious persecution, and commerce. All these factors were operating and gave rise to the African Jewish population. To the what? The African Jewish population. In the years, in the year 65 BC, the Roman armies under General Pompey captured Jerusalem. In AD 70, in 70 AD, General Vespasian and his son, Titus, put an end to the Jewish state with a great slaughter, like I just described. 
It says, during the period of the military governors of Palestine, many outrages and atrocities were committed against the residue of the people. And this is the people that were, that were left because those of us who believe in Yahweh Shai, we run like hell into Egypt and into Africa. So when the Lord said, when you see this run into the mountains, he was talking about Africa. So we ran out of Jerusalem and we ran into Africa. It says, during the period of Pompey to Julius, it has been estimated that over one million Jews fled into Africa. Fled into where? Africa. We never fall off the face of the earth. We were fleeing from Roman persecution and slavery. Yahweh Shai said, they shall fall by the edge of the sword and be led away captive. That's what slavery is. So those of us who ran, we ran. We ran into Africa. Over one million of us. It says the slave markets were full of black Jewish slaves. Black people. We. It goes on. And the Lord shall scatter thee. Now this is this man quoting Deuteronomy 28 and verse 64. And the Lord shall scatter thee amongst all nations from the one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Deuteronomy 28, 64. He is quoting this because this is part of the scattering of, um, of all Israel, but of Judah in particular. Because the Lord had to scatter Judah as well, you know. Why? Because he said, I'm going to scatter all of y'all. So northern kingdom was gone, no southern kingdom time. And what we did with the, is in AD 70, we fled into Africa. He goes on to say that the prophecy and all of the residues of the prophecies con um, contained in Deuteronomy 28 from 15 to 68 befell the black Jews after they disobeyed the laws of God. It befell what color Jews? The black Jews. Many nations transported the Jews into what? Slavery. And the sons of Israel transmigrated to every continent. Right? And I'm going to leave off reading this. This is from Babylon to Timbuktu. Get the book. This is page 84. You can read it for yourself. You can read the whole book. All right? Now, so this is an historical account of the Jews who are black people who fled into Africa in AD 17. Now, remember we read in um, Revelation 12 where it says that the dragon, when he could not um, kill the Christ, that he went after the, the seed of the woman, the woman, and that they fled into where? Into the wilderness. Right? It says, it says and the woman fled into the wilderness. That's the fulfillment of that. Where a place was for us for 1,203 square days. So, by the time they completed the conquest of Judah and Jerusalem, beginning in AD 70, they never completed it until they have completely established the Roman Empire and the Roman Catholic Church in 325 AD under Constantine. That's when, they, that's when the conquest was completed in 325. Some people say 320. AD under Constantine and the Roman papal church was set up. Now, if you count from 325 AD or 320 AD to 1260 years later, you are in 1494 or thereabout in the 1400s when they started the slavery in Africa. Count it and you'll see. And when they came to Africa, who did they come for? Us, the Negro. All right. I'm going to also read real quick one more, um, one more account. All right. So, anyways, let's go to this because what happened was that we fled into Africa, and this is an ancient map of Africa, and um, and it talks and it shows here 
uh, Negro land, Negro land, okay? And Negro land is where we ended up when we fled out of Africa because we had, sorry, when we fled out of um, Jerusalem because we had to pass Egypt, we had to pass Syria, we had to pass Algeria, and we had to go all the way to the West Coast. Now the scripture says that the, that the dragon chased after the woman and that the woman was taken on eagle's wings. So the Lord made us run all the way. We were so far from the Roman army that they could not catch us and we went into West Africa and we settled along um, this area which is called Negro land which is sub-Sahara. Remember, we talk about that sub-Sahara because look, as you can see, this is the Sahara Desert north of us. And north of the Sahara Desert is where you find Egypt and Libya and Algeria and those um, countries that were already featured in the scriptures. But there was no countries featured in the scriptures south of that. Nowhere in Bible history is there any country name that was sub Sahara. So we, the Jews, fled into West Africa, into Negro land, where we remained for 1260 years until the transatlantic slave trade. All right. Can I make and a quick point? A quick point about Negro land. Yes. The Hamites would not have named the country Negro land because they're not Negroes. Right. Right, so we are the Negroes. And we talked about that before because we talked, we showed those um, sale signs where they said Negroes for sale, right? Negroes for sale. That was us, Negroes. All right. And, so Ham, and, we, and Ham was not the father of the Negroes. Right, Ham is not the father of the Negroes. Ham is the father of the dark races, but not the Negroes. Right. Okay, they're black people too, but they're not Negroes. So we are the blacks, they are Cushy, and we are Shemi. We talk about that also before. Okay, so we stayed there until this occurred, the transatlantic slave trade, where they came and they took us and they scattered us to the four corners of the earth. So this is how we came to be brought out of Africa as slaves, as Israelite slaves. This is how it occurred. And this is what they're not teaching you in school because they don't want you to know who you are. And they want you to think that all black people are the same and that we are blacks from Ham. But as we pointed out yesterday in the lesson, that none of the Ethiopians were taken as slaves. We know that. That's, no, that's not a debate. No Egyptians were taken as slaves. That's not a debate. Otherwise, they would be calling us the Egyptian slaves, right? So we're not. The Libyans, we know, never came over us on slave ships. And these are Hamites. The Ethiopians never came over as slaves. We know that for sure. And we left the Canaanites in the land of Canaan because we were taken out of there. And no Canaanites are migrated from the land of Canaan into West Africa. None. There is no histor history um, of the Canaanites coming into West Africa. So we are not Canaanites family. We are not Egyptians. We are not Ethiopians. We are not the Libyans. So the question that we've been asking is that then who must we be? And the answer is we are Israel. We are Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth as God said he would and that we are waking up back in the last days again, another prophecy being fulfilled because we're the only person that's waking up we're, we're the only people, sorry <laughs> that's waking up saying we are Israel the scripture said that that would happen in the last days we are going to wake up we're going to bethink ourselves and remember who we are that's what the scripture says and, and and you just read in 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 Luke where um where they fled into the mountains. Yes. So where are they? 
Did they yeah. disappear off the face of the earth? No, we went into Africa. That's and a question way, that that that, <laughs> that needs to be to be answered. Yes. You know, the people yes. fled. Yes. Where are they today? Thank you very much, Sabai. And this is my last article, and then we're going to shut it down. We've been running on an hour. Okay, it says the Kingdom of Judah in West Africa. The Kingdom of Judah in, in West Africa. I'm reading this off of uh, history.com, right? And um, let me go down to the map. Here's, there's this map, right? And then you can see here, it's a blow-up version of the map, and you can see it says the Kingdom of Judah. Where, where was it? In the Slave Coast. So um, when we look at this map, you see where they have the slave coast right here? That's where the kingdom of Judah was. So this map is a blown up version of that same map and you can see the kingdom of Judah. This is, I think, this is a 1747 map. 1747, when you look at your map today, you're not gonna see this. And nobody's gonna teach you this, but this is the map that they used to come to West Africa to take us. And I'm going to read a little portion of it because, by the way, yes, here is also a portion of that map that I just showed you, the Negro land, right? They also, and this is the Slave Coast, 1771. All right, and these are the names of how they would call us, right? A boy is Yahawa, and a girl is Yakob, Yakoba. I mean, sorry, a boy is Yakoba, and Yahawa is a man. Hewa, Hewa is a man. Um, Ye way is a woman and so on and so forth. And these are names, you can find these, these names. It's not made up, okay? It's a fact. Now, now um, I want to read a little portion of this. And, um, and that's going to be it for today. Right here. Right here. It says the West African, Afri in, in West Africa, Judah is bordered by the Gold Coast, which is Ghana, to the west and Benin to the east, and is situated within modern Togo. So where they call it modern, where is modern Togo is today, that was Judah. It has a complex history, the result of colonization by England, France, Portugal, and the Dutch and domestic conquest by the kingdom of the Dahomey in 1725. Judah has been designated as a town or a kingdom with multiple names in many sources. And they're gonna talk about um, one, some of the sources. It says Robin Law, a professor of West African study wrote this. We're gonna read it. Although um, Okuda, is the spelling of the town's current name. It occurs in, Euro in, in European sources between the 17th and 19th century in various other forms. In English, it is wa wa wider. In Dutch, it is Fida. In French, it is Judah. And in Portuguese, a Judah. And you can read that um, in, in um, this book, page, page 218. All right? In 1771, colonial cartographers, which are map makers, had renamed Judah the Slave Coast when it became the primary slave port in West Africa, stretching several hundred miles from the Bright of Benin to Gabon. By the way, Gabon just had a coup. That's how we're kicking them out. Okay. Even with this change, the view of the name Judah does not enter in, into historical record until 1671 to 1673. It, and it is opposed by Elise Workos, who in 1888 states that the Europeans have designed various names for Fida, Uida, Wida. Order. The um the region the the the, the region ancient authors called Judah. And you can um I'm gonna leave this article so you can read it. It's very difficult for me to read from the screen because it's so small. But anyhow, all right. It says the region's ancient authors call it Judah. The inhabitants were called Judaic 
and indeed they were regarded as a remnant of the lost tribes of Israel. And we don't have to say nothing more. <laughs> no, say nothing more. We don't have to say nothing more, right? Family, we are the people. We are the people. And we want the, uh, and the tribes also on the mainland of Africa to know that we are their brethren. Right. That we fled out of Africa, out of Jerusalem, migrated into Africa, and we built um, kingdoms and cities there because we are the people who God blessed. Okay? And they came and took us as slaves, and we served our 400 years, and we need to wake up. We need to wake up and realize that we are the children of Israel to turn back to the Heavenly Father, to keep in the laws, statutes, and commandments which we never kept when we were in our own land and is the reason why we were, why we were um, exiled. And the Lord has promised that he's going to bring us back with a spectacular, a spectacular exodus. So much so that the exodus out of Egypt will never more be spoken about. And he's going to bring us back into our land and grant us the blessings that he promised to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob. And with that family, I say all praises and all honor and all glory to the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and his son, whose name is Yahweh Shai. And until next lesson, Shalom, Shalom, and Shalom, everybody. <laughs>